the structure of DNA. Get ready for the note taking, cause I'm back children. Virtual Patterson, here to rule the classroom. Okay, fine, but I'm at least here to rule this lecture. So let's do this. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It is a shape like a twisted ladder. The shape is called a, that's right, a double helix. It looks like that. Isn't it party, children? All twisty ladders. See, they take a ladder, twist it all up, double helix. It's a type of secondary structure in blanks, too. That's right, secondary structure in proteins. Very good work. Type of secondary structure in proteins, too. Now, just like in... Just like in proteins, blank shape comes from interactions between the parts that result in the F word. No, not that F word. An F word that you are allowed to say in school. Not fertilization either. Stop worrying about the F word. Whose shape are we talking about? Yes, DNA shape. DNA shape comes from like origami folding. DNA shape comes from folding. DNA has several parts. There are four blank bases because of the element blank in them. Nitrogen bases. There are four nitrogen bases. Here they are. I'll give them to you. There is adenine, which looks like this. Look at all that delicious nitrogen. That'd be why they're nitrogen bases. There is also thiamine, which sometimes is spelled with an IA, sometimes spelled with a Y. Which one's correct? Doesn't matter. Thymine looks like that again. Look at those delicious nitrogens in there. There's thymine. There's also cytosine. Again, you're seeing the pattern nitrogen in the nitrogen bases. And the final one is I know you think it would end with an ene, but it doesn't. It is guanine. Okay, it does end with an ene. Ends all around. Nitrogen bases because of the nitrogen. Notice the ring shapes. You have two little rings, two bigger rings. A big ring always goes with a little ring. It's called purines and pyrimidines. Adenine always pairs with thiamine, so A always goes with T, and C always goes with a G. Big one, little one, big one, little one. It's always A and T, C and G. So however much C you have, you have that much G. However much T you have, you have that much A, and vice versa. The combination of these bases make up the blank for DNA. That's right, the code makes up the code for DNA. This code is transcribed into mRNA and then translated into a protein. Good. Translated into a protein. Proteins are what directly affect our All right, now that you've discussed about the code and the order of these bases making the code, the bases, they are the blanks of the ladder. You have the rungs of the ladder. Those are the rungs. See that the part that you'd be, you know, in the middle with. The rungs of the ladder, those are your bases. The sides of the ladder, they are called the backbone, the backbone. See how it goes all twisty and swirly around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. That is your twisting ladder. That's your backbone. So at the middle, you have those nitrogen bases making the rungs. Up the outside, you have the backbone, just like in the column. The backbone. There, because it's made out of alternating blanks and blanks, alternating sugars, won't phosphates, because it's made out of alternating sugars and phosphates, we call it the blank dash blank backbone. Imaginatively, they call it the sugar phosphate backbone. Sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. I thought you could do a dance with the sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, all the way down the outside. You saw that in your coloring with the alternation and the color. Yes, yes, I'm getting back to it. I'm getting back to it.
the sugar in DNA is deoxy, mate, shut your faces. I hate school and I hate you.